All right, welcome to Social Distillation, the submarine still of the internet, where we attempt to drop the bead and pour white lightning straight onto your brain. I'm going to need some today because what are we talking about, Samo? Well, we've got two topics and unfortunately no white lightning for me because I'm taking the month of April off. We're hitting the reset button. Uh, so I have uh, Sprite and then my backup is some Gatorade today. So if I'm a little boring, I noticed in October, my uh, my videos were a little bit more boring on my part when I wasn't uh, a little bit buzzed and opened up. So I'm going to try to do better this month. Uh, this is day four. So uh, we're, we're still in the semi-withdrawal period. Uh, yeah. And you have to go all the way through because you can't let an eight-year-old shame you or however old she is now. All right. So if you're one of our veterans... Uh, we're going to experiment with something. We did part one, part twos before when we were splitting up Wheel of Time, but then we just started doing a whole separate day for mm -hmm. that. But we're going to do that with topics now for, for several reasons. Uh, one of the, the main one is to give you, you know, the option of, well, I'm not interested in this topic, but I am interested in that other one, or I've been following their sexy time, or I've been following the Sunday school time, or, you know, just, just be able to pick pick your poison. You can watch all of them if you normally watch all of the full episodes. I, I prefer that. But uh, we're doing that so so it's a little bit more digestible and you can pick and choose your content a little better. And it's just not as scary to see a 45-minute video on mm -hmm. your feed than a two-hour video on your feed. Uh, I'm going to have to get more creative with the memes because we're going to have more thumbnails and but it also <laughs> but it will help with the titles because there is an optimal kind of letter range and it's not mm -hmm. filling up the whole damn thing and uh, sometimes i run out of you know we talked about x y and z but i can only fit x and a, a real short blurb for y in the title so it, it'll help in some ways and uh, hopefully there's very few drawbacks to it let us know in the comments now if you are new to here uh one thing i wanted to say is uh, is talk about original content. We are trying to be original and I know there's so much floating around on the internet and it's sometimes really hard to see who's copying who and who's just regurgitating stuff. Uh, we try not to do that. There are some difficulties with that though. The first topic we're going to talk about is a news story. Very difficult to be super original on a news story. So we try to give you just two different takes on it because we both think differently about a lot of these topics. Uh, we're not journalists. We don't have boots on the ground. We don't have access to the latest information until we get it from another person who's posted it online. So it's 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 impossible for us to be completely original there. The other uh, thing that gets in the way is sometimes we just can't say it better. Uh, an example of that I'll, I'll bring up here. I've been doing the COVID stuff. I'm really good with statistics. I'm really good with the biology behind it. But sometimes someone just says it better than I ever could. And this is an example of it right here. Long COVID has nothing to do with COVID and kids by Vinay Prasad. He is a medical policy professor of epidemiology. His statistics are way better than mine. I could follow what he was saying, but I couldn't have generated that knowledge myself. So sometimes they just say it better. And in those cases, I try to point you in their direction mm -hmm. and then give you a brief summary. And then, uh, yeah, so those are the things that get in the way. Do you have any other thoughts on what might get in the way of original content? Um, no, I, I'll point to what we did last time, which was a reaction to something. Mm. Um, and we admitted partly for clickbaitiness, but the our hope there was that we would bring something knew something more to the table than what the original video was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and that was COVID related. This, I think uh, I went to a very dark place with this school shooting as I usually do with these. Um, and, and, and I, I knew I, you would. So I took yeah. the analytical hat on it. And, uh, and so hopefully that gives a little perspective so on this. Why don't you start with the, the analytical part of it? And the easy part would be the politics of it. And there's plenty of people talking about that. And it's, you know, a good illustration of uh, the nonsense is actually this Trump indictment. 
So remember a week or two ago, whenever this first started, where Trump sent out that, not tweet, that tr truth on Truth Social that he was about to be indicted. Um, and then all sorts of political blah -bitty blah and talking heads began chattering. And one of the things, if you're on the right, that you would have heard a lot of is a lot of people criticizing DeSantis for not having a stronger comment originally, mm -hmm. and even Trump and his people criticizing DeSantis. Well, hold on a freaking minute. You're going to send out this blast to say, I'm about to be indicted. It's a, it's a sham. It's all political, you know, pro protest this, and then you're going to attack your political rival about it. You're, you have admitted, and your lawyer has admitted, you were already talking to the Manhattan DA about turning yourself in for an arraignment so it was all theater it was all nonsense mm -hmm. all of this talk and then desantis when news came down that oh yeah this is actually going to happen he did put out a stronger statement that that basically said if if a manhattan da is wants to extradite we will we will fight it because we think this is political this isn't has nothing to do with the justice system so what? He was already talking about turning himself in for an arraignment. So everybody got all worked up, you know, across both sides and intra rivalry within the sides for nothing, for absolutely nothing. Well, that's and that that is exactly Trump's claim to fame, though. Mm -hmm. He is theater. He He is entertainment. I mean, he, he he is the WWE wrestler of politics. And that's not even just because he did do WWE wrestling. It's because this is what he made his name on. Now he did some good things in office, but at but he never would have gotten elected or where he was in in office because without this whole theater issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was the social media president. He, he is someone who clearly believes in the adage that um, all publicity is good publicity. But more than believing in it, he is a master manipulator of it. Well, I'm going to say large yes part and because he's this. utterly shameless. And this is how the, some things that aren't original thoughts can be become original. You just gave a thought. I'm going to say yes and here. Yes and people still watch damn t reality TV. People still watch Survivor. People still watch Big Brother. People Milf still watch. Manor. Yeah, these are all actors and actresses. The, this is this not real. They have a script. It's not an accident that Big Brother this last season was all about systemic oppression. It... It, it, you know, here's a very simple visual cue: is one of the shows that I watch with my wife because we like cooking shows is the is the Great British Bake Off. Uh, if you'll notice, they wear the same clothes on both days of each each weekend of the of the challenges. Why? So that the editors can splice things together mm -hmm. however they want to tell the most compelling story. Because if you uh if they want you to have that feeling of the ticking clock and oh, are they gonna make it on time? But they don't have anything of them rushing and panicking. For the second day, well, let's just take some something where someone looks out of sorts so we can build the drama on the first day. And you won't know because they're wearing the same clothes. Yeah, that's a great example. All right. To the to the to the issue at hand. Okay, so we let this marinate, and this is one reason why uh, another again about being original. When it comes to the the news stories that especially that are inflammatory, we like to let them marinate for a second. And let the details come out, first of all, before we start com commenting too early. And uh, the first subject of the day if, is uh, the shooting in Tennessee, the school shooting in Tennessee. Uh, obviously, a tragic incident where uh, a person entered a school and shot three children and three People that worked at the school, a janitor, the head of the school, and what was the other one? There were, I don't remember the details. There were three nine-year-old children and three administrators. Uh, I think it was a teacher, the 
the the head of the school and then someone else a janitor you said yeah it was i know it was a janitor and the head of the school and i i'd assumed it was a teacher in the other one but uh but yeah and then the three children so tragic incident the tennessee police officers showed up rather quickly and they didn't uvalde it and they took mm-hmm. care of took care of business credit credit where it's due they released the body care footage pretty much immediately and these officers were actually running toward the sound of gunfire and let's leave aside the the viral conspiracy theory with the cameras the, i don't know if you saw it the, the i hadn't heard that the there's school footage of the shooter going through the halls and then the body cam footage and they're zooming in with grainy video on all of these things showing that this person's wearing different shoes they're wearing pumas in this one and they're wearing whatever brand in another one put all that aside for now we'll, we'll let the the authorities sort through that one uh, the the theory the, the conspiracy theory is it's sham body cam footage uh but you know whatever let's assume it's it's true for this the sake of this conversation that it is real body cam f- footage uh they did their job everything was done well the, even without the body cam footage the shooter's dead before it could do any more damage than it originally did so uh so this person and here's where the controversy comes into was originally uh reported as she and a former student but it turned out later that she identified as he and had a different name so uh let's start with all that there is something twisted and warped in your mind if your first instinct when six people are murdered in cold blood three of them nine-year-old children and your first instinct is to protect the perpetrator to respect the perpetrator to get all bent out of shape because the perpetrator was dead named because you're afraid that this is going to instigate a backlash against the trans community there is something deeply wrong with you morally if that is your first instinct that to me that is even worse than the sleazy politicians who are getting faster and faster every time there's an incident like this you know it, they used to at um, least no i am actually rapidly wade into the gun control argument and now they're shouting it immediately well that that the gun control part is not new to me anyways as far as in my concern but i would actually push back a little bit on your first statement if because if you're if you truly truly deep down inside anticipated a reactionary uh a, a punch back towards the trans community that's not a, a sinister idea it might be wrong but it's not sinister because we don't want that we don't want a bunch of people in Tennessee finding every trans person, pulling them out in the street and shooting them in the head because it's not their fault. This person was crazy and demented. It's not their fault, but on the politician side to immediately try to make it an issue of trans rights and, you know, the mental health of trans people because of the patriarchal cis heteronormative society we live in. That's different. So on the political side yes sinister but if you truly believed that your that 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 uh putting this information out there right away uh would cause a backlash then that's actually compassionate no it's not it it is it is uh dangerously narcissistic and egoistic that three children their bodies aren't even cold yet, and your concern is for the perpetrator. Any Anything else can come later. The fact that so many people were so quick to jump on this, and this is just, this is just point one on this. 
the fact that so many people were so quick to jump on this and the the overwhelming portion of a certain sect of the media's coverage was let's make sure we get the pronouns right and the name right there is something morally wrong with you point two the other problem there is this is where the both this is where i draw the line on the both sides ism yeah there are problems with both sides but the idea that oh well there's violence on there's hate there's bullshit okay let me give you an example there are laws protecting abortion clinics that are not in place for anything else they are they are treated like federal buildings in a lot of ways more so actually in, in their protection why because ostensibly the the pro life movement has dangerous violent elements bull crap there were a handful of clinic bombings spread over a decade that pales in comparison to the vitriol and the violence of the pro-abortion crowd and i'm not even talking about the abortions themselves i'm just talking about the advocates we're being told that we need to be calm lest people go out of their minds and attack the trans community while there are i am i've been reliably informed sam that if you storm a capitol building that's an insurrection and it happened in kentucky and tennessee just days after this massacre is what this was this was an attempted mass murder of a group of people because they were that group of people well again I, uh, you you're 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 talking completely something different than what i said uh, so let's get back on the timeline so first of all in the original news and and press releases and based on what the police chief that did his interviews mm -hmm. came from, the person's legal name, uh, I don't think we need to say it here, was a female name. The legal name was a female name. And obviously the people who showed up on site came across a biological female. That's the spurring of the original news reports. It was the right-leaning side of the aisle that did all the investigated reporting to put out there on social media as quickly as they could using her social media before it was taken down his her so social media before it was taken down to say look trans 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 and then the reaction to that was the sleazy people that came in and said well you're dead naming her well they didn't dead name her they had a legal name and a female biologically female body in front of them dead on the floor it was the Snoop reaction to it from the other side to get every bit of information on this person before the social media could be taken down that I think led you're, to you're, the revelation that it was... You're wrongly slanting why the right did this. It's not well, an I'm accident. not going to say the right. It's the Snoopy, Snoopy people, the people that wanted to get all the information before it could be taken down. But one of the reasons there were bloggers and social media people looking into... Uh, her social media was because some of the first reactions on the left were that this was a MAGA person because she had she was dressed up like a young man in tactical gear wearing a red trucker hat this wasn't an accident this was intended to inflame people and 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 make it seem like some some MAGA nutcase went in and shot up a Christian school for some reason. Yeah, but now we're now we're getting back on topic. So we have <clears throat> we have the original news response, which had nothing to do with MAGA. The the original press releases, which had nothing to do with MAGA. We had some left people. Of course, they're they're talking about gun rights. Of course, this is this was they're ready for it. Anytime there's a shooting, they're already ready for it. Then you have, of course, I did it with the Ubaldi shooter. I looked up the social media as quickly as I could so I could see who this person was before it was taken down because I mean we talk about shit. I needed to get some information, mm -hmm. but there's no way I was going to draw a conclusion right then and then spread it around to the rest of the internet. Well, that happened. 
And of course, it was done in a way that was supposed to get a reaction. And and, and this and is I'm something not we sure. complained about last time, which was the the outsized influence of Twitter, considering mm -hmm. considering that it is the one of the lowest populated social media platforms, and yet it's because of who's on there overwhelmingly public figures and media figures it drives narratives so a, a lot of these initial reactions are are just people throwing out tweet storms mm -hmm. well and a lot of screenshots uh were, were shared and you know it, it was it was wrong all the way around all sides everybody doing it and making everything public for a reaction because there were people trying to incite a violent reaction to that community. And again, we'll talk about the problems within that community, especially with mental health, but most are innocent. Almost all are innocent. Well, remember with, when it comes to trans rights, I want to remind everybody the people screaming hardest and loudest for it aren't the trans community. They just want to be left alone. Well, evidence of that is how shunned and silenced um, former members of the trans community are. You have to dig to find there are outspoken advocates who, who have transitioned and regretted it and said and come out and, and you know, done interviews uh I, th I think I think the trigonometry people had one a couple of months back, didn't the they? Detransitioner. De yeah, they've had several. So. so there are those people, but you have to dig through alternative sources like you know trigonometry and people like that. Ben if you want a good to, source for that, to hear uh, about it, Benjamin Boyce. That's like seventy-five percent of his uh, his podcast these lately so so where i'll push back is simply because i didn't see anything from the right calling for anything even remotely violent against the trans community what i saw was people point very quickly pointing out the left and especially the as you point in the loudest voices in the lgbt emphasis on the t community talking about the recent tennessee law that's where it, I was going next, because now we get to timelines, it, and then we have your MAGA the, hat, and we have all of that. The The exploitation of that is worse than the Don't Say Gay bill, because they didn't ban anything. In fact, most well, of they, the bills— they banned gender-affirming care under 18. Nope. The laws I have seen— you can still do it. They just make you jump through more hoops so that you can't do it behind a parent's back. And hopefully parents aren't pressured into doing it because there are all manner of affirmative consents and affirmative uh, uh, notices that you have been informed of the details of the care the, the long-term consequences of whatever that care is and the potential side effects. These are all things that should be done in the first place. This is just, uh, you know, informed consent 101 when it comes to medical policy, but you're having to carve out an exception because people are ignoring it for political reasons. That's what these bills are, at least the ones that I have looked at. Of I've got I've got the bill right here. In, in much the same way that the don't say gay bill still allowed teaching so long as it met these criteria. It according to section B here, it is banning it, period. including puberty blockers, not just the, the surgical procedures, which I'm okay with under 18. I'm actually okay with that. I don't even think the parent should be able to make that determination for their child.
but still mm-hmm. it's my problem with the media coverage in the mainstream is they're refusing to connect those two dots that this happened right after this bill was passed. And at the same time, you're having, what would, would they call it? A national trans day of vengeance or was that? Well, it was, uh, there was a trans awareness day, uh, no, there was there was actually but, a trans but day of within vengeance. the community there were a lot of people calling for and some of the uh video i saw of the people in um in the kentucky capitol building were wearing shirts that were the trans flag with like uh, the silhouette of an ar-15 on it mm-hmm. and 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 slogans that weren't as innocuous as come and take it that they were um Yes, there are those calling for uh, the the most infamous one being the gif from the Arizona governor's uh, press secretary of pew pew me when I see transphobes. There was a lot of that. Okay, so those are the the details about it. We had a bill Why can't passed. I find the freaking text of the freaking bill? Uh, Tennessee. Let me uh, just send it to you here all right sorry Con- continue your thought you should have it now okay so we had a bill passed and another subsequent one that defined the that that added to it that it it is uh it defined let me share that so we so i don't get it completely wrong this is sb1440 it basically codifies sex as the person's immutable immutable biological sex as determined by anatomy and genetics is existing at the time of birth and evidence of a person's biological sex so that removed that that basically if you codify that in law and language matters you can't say I am a woman if you were born a man, no matter if you transitioned or not, because it specifically says at birth. And which is now we're talking about other issues like can this person go to a woman's jail? Can this person compete in female sports, even though they've gone through a full transition? No, because they are technically male by that definition in the state of Tennessee. So those two things passed. We have a an underground, albeit movement, within the I'm I'm not even going to call it the trans community. I'm going to call it the trans activist community uh-huh. uh, because that's more accurate. Uh, and then we have someone who was not entirely mentally stable that went down that that uh, that route that was being pushed by the otherwise louder not willing to do that thing themselves group of people and this is how it always works this is the the david koresh and the branch davidians this is this is this is how these things go we we talk about cults all the time and we talk about this movement being a cult well a cult member heard a message the left the left side media likes to use a a, a term all the time called a dog whistle right yeah, that, that term actually does have meaning because some people hear what they want to hear and they are mentally unstable enough to go do the thing that needs to that, that, that they think needs to be done. And this person was trained in the weapons she used, which is, you know, it's. But the, the point is, she was mentally unstable and she heard this message and went and acted on it so there is a timeline to this and now if you identify those things without arguing over dead naming or uh you know whether uh again the 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 stupid things that are bouncing around now because they make good clicks right instead of arguing over that if you just follow the line of how this all happened well guess what now you can start talking solutions 
your light, your, what you called your lightning rod mode, uh, moment in our text is a solution. We can talk about that. Uh, I want to take, I would, uh, I would take a mental health perspective because I'm sorry, trans already puts you in the body dysmorphic category. So now we need to look at that. The whole testosterone uh, thing, it has a little merit, but I think it clouds the waters right now that if she was already unstable, why, why would a woman shoot, shoot up a biological woman, shoot up a school? Well, you put her on testosterone and she becomes more aggressive. That may have merit, but we, we use testosterone for all kinds of things. And there's already some stupid legislation trying to go through on testosterone. So let's, let's calm down on that one. Uh, but the, the, the fact of the matter is the testosterone doesn't matter if she's not mentally unstable to begin with. Even a high testosterone male isn't going to go shoot somebody unless the, there is something to make him imbalanced. We we got this when we were kids because of the Columbine shooting. Oh my gosh, violent video games and, and heavy metal. It we We listened to hard rock and heavy metal. We played doom and wolfenstein we didn't when we were younger than that we watched looney tunes and we didn't try and drop any anvil on any tom and jerry <laughs> or tom and jerry man that there's a reason itchy and scratchy exists because if you they look had to go one light, step above tom, tom and jerry exactly you know? but why because most of the people who engage in those activities are well adjusted to one degree or another they aren't warped individuals and the long-term data is suggesting that it didn't it doesn't push you in that direction it actually alleviates some of the urges in that direction to sedate you a little bit because you've already used some of that mental energy that would go towards that a, a much better marker that has been known for a very long time of psychopathy is cruelty to animals mm -hmm. that uvalde kid there was a long history of it, apparently. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, well so do you, you want to talk about your your let's, school part, your 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 armed yeah. guard type stuff first, or do you want me to go into the mental health? Let Let me just because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go deeper on this idea uh, in a minute after you say your piece, but. On its face, this the idea, the the knee jerk reaction that it is the instrument's fault and not the perpetrator's fault is just logically absurd and ignores reality. It ignores history. Um, I was gonna go dig around and see if I could find a clip of this, but I decided not to waste waste the time, and I'll, I'll just briefly summarize it. Uh, did you watch the movie The Highwaymen on Netflix? Um, it's about the it's about the the guys that took down uh, the Texas Rangers who who tracked down and took down Bonnie and Clyde, uh, and it's uh, Woody Harrelson and uh, and Kevin Costner, so two great old actors. And uh, there's this hilarious scene where Costner goes in uh, to a gun shop with a catalog and buys you know, an arsenal off the shelf, including things like a BAR and Tom's Tommy guns. Guns have been around for a very long time. Why is it that school shootings in particular and, and these kind of mass shootings that are, that are more than just like one of the, one of the tricks of the statistics. And we've talked about this is that mass shootings tend to ignore things like gang violence. Which, which which are mass shootings, but they are different. There's a different kind of psychopathy there. Well, right? then there's also a, a, we 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 do naturally take something into account when we think of crime, and that's a power dynamic. Mm -hmm. And when you think of a lot of gang violence, a lot of times the power dynamic is equal. Uh, well, or, when or we talk least, about yeah. when we talk about mass shootings in this style, what we're talking about is a lone gunman going into a soft target mm -hmm. in order in order to very, kill very as well many yeah. in order to kill as many people as possible before either committing suicide or committing suicide by cop. Mm -hmm. 
that's what we're talking about here. And that is a different kind of psychopathy, which is, I think, what you're going to go into, which is the mental health aspect of all this. Mm -hmm. But the the idea that somehow we can eliminate these by creating tighter gun laws is just absurd because it ignores the fact that this is relatively new and guns aren't. All right. So rather than fighting over the Second Amendment, which isn't going to go anywhere and most of these sleazy politicians know that it's let me let me rant and rave so that i can fundraise off the people who get who i can get emotional so they click donate without thinking one of the things that we have talked about uh is mental health of men when they don't have a purpose and a, a good marker of that is people who get out of the military and they lose that structure and that purpose. Well, there are a lot of people on the right talk about why don't we arm teachers? And I'm all for that, but I understand how some people would be queasy about that because if you if you think about Mrs. Bigler carrying a Glock, it might freak you out. Well, but there there's a there's something less than that that still works. Why don't we allow teachers to be armed if they have gone through all the training and you know yeah okay so that would eliminate the the scary would 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 mrs bigler ha, be able to handle the situation but i bet you coach, coach blackburn could have yeah you know former what marine mm -hmm. he probably had guns and training of his own i think he was a hunter because i'd been to his house once and i think yeah. i saw a lot of uh yeah. mounts and stuff but and that's where I was going with this is how many veterans do we have uh, who would be willing to go into this situation? Uh, we, there are there are um, uh, policies in place whereby you can have your student loans forgiven if you go into a uh, an at risk school as a teacher. Um, and you can have your student loans forgiven if you stay it's, there. It's all kinds of professions. Years. We're we're on oh. one of those programs with my wife, who's a psychiatrist in a very underserved area. So why don't we do that with veterans, whether whether you know full twenty retired or you know did some combat tours? And this is one of the infuriating things to me as a as a less government conservative is that when we waste billions of dollars on things like the quagmire in Ukraine, we could be spending that on, say, incentivizing former veterans to go in as teachers if they take this, uh, if they do a training course for dealing with an active shooter. You know, it would and, also and, help with this. That would also fix some other problems, especially with boys coming out of high school and bring back classes like shop and ag, because yeah, this is vet, veteran coming back may not have the interest of going to university long enough to get a teacher mm -hmm. certificate, but they probably were been working on tanks and Jeeps and Humvees over in Iraq and they know how to turn yeah. a wrench well, the, and change the teacher certificate is a whole nother kettle of fish but setting yeah, yeah, that aside we, yeah that's a whole so, separate conversation so part of the incentive and what what made me think of this was um my dad was very has been very bad at retirement which is what we're talking about he he's he needs something to do and men something are, he, men who retire early die early something he did for a while was he helped get a j rotsy program started at the high school there and and he was the instructor for a while. It was him and it was a, a senior NCO who was also retired. Well, they had both served 20 plus years, so they could have sat back on their retirement pension. But part of the incentive for coming in and teaching these JROTC programs is they bump up your pension. I don't know if you if you get full pay or close to it, but they bump your pension up as if you were still serving, basically. So you don't I don't think you get all of the bonuses and things that go along with that but your base salary gets bumped up. You could do something like that for a situation like this is you know we will give you whether it's getting bonuses that you used to get or if you're already fully retired we'll bump your pension up to closer to your base salary. 
that could be something that could be incentivized at the, the state, the local, the federal level, and would be something relatively quickly to implement because you already have people with a certain degree of training. E e even non-combat people have to stay qualified in firearms. So they are already very familiar and comfortable with handling a firearm. So you just need to give them the active shooter training and away they go. A client of mine was telling me about the active shooter training. His, uh, They had some of his people go through because there was a lot of threats to the company he was working for. And he, he was talking about Uvalde after, uh, after he told me about the training. He said, there's no way that these guys, if they knew what they were doing, were scared to go in. Because the, the way it's done, there's no way the active shooter can get you before you get them. <laughs> and I mean, it's just... It, yeah, I, I wouldn't use the words no way because people get lucky. Uh, but at the same time, it's a very small percentage chance. You have the advantage as mm -hmm. the assault team. You, you typically think of a person in defense having the advantage, but not with the way these things work. What What makes breaching a room so dangerous in a situation like if you watch uh, American Sniper and you you know what they were doing in Fallujah... They had no idea what was in that building. That's where it became really dangerous for these door kickers is you don't know who's in there. In an active shooter situation, you generally have a, a solid idea of the situation. You've got a, an active shooter, a lone shooter, and he is here. Mm -hmm. Or she is or here. Or she. <laughs> well, I guess technically, if you go by the letter of the culture now, she he he was there. Uh, yeah, screw that. All right. So <laughs> be before I go into a deep, dark hole, wh where is it you wanted to take this conversation? Well, for once, I might be more controversial to you on this than on this one. because I the, doubt it. Well, it, I'll start soft. First okay. of all, the we, we brought up the, the gender affirming care bill. Affirming care should have no place in medicine. You should be empathetic, should be sympathetic, but you should not be affirming. It, l l let's go back to where you, you started talking about mental health and a term that is being phased out. It seems to me, cause I don't hear it as much when the, when this whole trans nonsense kind of started, I blame Caitlyn Jenner. The term you heard was body dysmorphia. That is a thing. And it is a broad spectrum of things. We heard about that a lot when we were kids because Teenage girls especially have body image issues, and you learned about bulimia and anorexia in health class. You don't affirm that. If you did, your license would be revoked, and you may face criminal charges for child abuse. And as an adult, you have the right to do all those things, but we have the right to say you're not healthy. It will do the secular example, bodybuilding. We can look at bodybuilders, and some people celebrate bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. Male and female. Lightweight. But you know, deep down in your heart, Ronnie Coleman is not healthy right now. Mm -hmm. Most bodybuilders don't live as long as he do, did, has, is still living. And that's, and it's getting worse and worse and worse the bigger the cocktails of drugs they're taking are, especially the females. You can watch them be basically become a man with a vagina in front of your eyes because they're they're taking such high levels of uh testosterone and other drugs that help with their hormone profile to make them bigger and stronger and more vascular and all of these things we can say you know what you have the right to do that with your body as an adult but you're not healthy you're you're in in, in they have body dysmorphia too, because once you get semi that big, you're never big enough. And you have to understand that, especially if you're going to go to the gym and you're going to try to build muscle as a natural, normal, healthy human being, you have to understand that that person is not healthy in the head. Now they have a specific goal. They can go for it and they know they're going to die young, whatever. Same thing with trans. You know what? You're 25 years old and you you don't feel right in your 
sex role and you want to dress up in the opposite way and act the opposite way and even maybe try to date the opposite way, make sure they're consenting with that and you let them know. But we don't have to tell you that you are perfectly fine in the head. Because if you were perfectly fine in the head, you would be in line with reality. So we shouldn't be affirming anything. What, what, you, you can accept we, without affirming. You don't even have to affirm the adult. You can accept. I was about to ask without, who we were listening to, and I was trying to remember the way they phrased it. Of, um, it, it, accept is it accepting or affirming how they phrased it. I'm trying to remember who that was that we were listening to when we were fishing about about this idea that, um, accept to a lot of people, accept means affirm. It's no, I can, you know. I can shrug and say, you do you, and society can allow it, but stop making me have to affirm your life decisions and your life choices. I'm allowed to disagree and say, no, that's a bad idea. Well, and again, or, it, it, it's, again, accepting, okay, you want to do you versus you want to go to a women's prison? No. You want to compete against biological females? No. That's different than accepting somebody. It's even different than affirming somebody. Mm -hmm. Now it's distorting reality around somebody instead of letting them have their own reality. Big difference. So we already, so we have to quit affirming. We have to establish that this whole thing where you think you're something that you, you aren't is not in line with reality so therefore is a mental health issue again you don't we don't we don't put people in jail for having depression that's a mental health issue we're not going to put you in jail because you you feel uncomfortable in your body but we have to actually keep you in line with reality at the same time you can you can distort your own body however you want we do it with tattoos piercings all the time you know, there's, there's, there's the dragon lady and she's got little nubs and horns and all of these things, whatever, if you can afford it, go ahead, but it is not reality. And the rest of the world isn't going to change around you other than we're going to make sure nobody's actually violent towards you. Okay. That I can think I'm the reincarnation of Napoleon all I want, but it doesn't mean France has to turn over their government to me. And if you affirm me, then you are partially responsible when I try invade Austria. Okay. So now part B, which is going to be the most, more controversial one. I know it touches, this is where the right and the left are going to hate me because the right wants no, no more regulation on guns. And the left wouldn't want something to be connected to any re regulation, even though they want regulation. We need to start connecting mental health to gun ownership. And I'm not talking about, I go sit and talk to a therapist every once in a while. I'm talking about you are depressed to the point you're on heavy meds and you might be suicidal. Uh, you're so anxious, you can't hardly live in the world without being drugged. This needs to be connected to your ability to own a gun because one day off your meds, you're, you're, you're a stick of dynamite. And most of the people in this community, as with the girl, girl that shot up this school are heavily medicated for all of the other things around body dysmorphia, depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal tendencies because they're unhappy with their own body all of these things and we do need to actually make that part of the evaluation process for owning a deadly weapon the huge problem with that though is um the fact that we glorify having a mental illness so everybody has one now there's that but there there is the who determines because there are plenty of people who think, because I'm a Christian, I have a mental illness. There are plenty of people who, even though you're not a conservative, you don't go along with the progressive radical lefty narrative. So you too have a mental illness. Well, that's what I'm saying. Are you 
seeing a psychiatrist who is medicating you heavily. I mean, th that's it. That, it. that has to be part of the evaluation process. There are so many things that are on that background check that you would consider an invasion of your privacy that this is not even a big one to add to the list. I I I still think it's um too uh too gameable to use one of your well, terms. Everything's going to be gameable, but I think... I, I think I think a better line and a, a line that more people could accept would be and but again, we have become such a convoluted mess of a society. You start to run into additional problems because I was going to say if you have been involuntarily committed, but that is really hard to do now. Yeah, it's, it's even when it should be do done. Yeah. So though those laws need reforming, um, so that if somebody is a danger to themselves or others, and and there are situations where this can happen where your rights as an individual can be curtailed restricted or taken away and it is difficult to do that on purpose because the basically the prosecutor the accuser has to make an affirmative case so you 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 have to make a strong affirmative case for why this person's rights should be temporarily revoked curtailed whatever that should be allowed it's we we have gone past the days of nurse ratchet and you know lobotomizing people who are uh who don't get along in society who who are just you know no, a little wacky look or whatever at the, look at the u.s public school system <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think we can safely revisit some of the laws that came out from the exposés of the uh of the mental health industry that spawned things like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. But I think we also need to acknowledge the fact that the when you're heavily medicated for a mental health issue, you actually can be dangerous in certain situations, especially if you're not taking your meds like you should, or, or, or you, you needed a new dose and you didn't see your psych or something along those lines. And if we connected more things to that, and again, we'll make tr you, the details of making it as little, as difficult to game as possible we can discuss after mm -hmm. acknowledging the facts of the matter. Uh, but if we tied more things to that, that are dangerous, like if you're too heavily medicated, you should probably not be driving because you're a danger to everybody else on the road. Uh, guess how, guess what people are going to start doing less of doctor shopping to get a diagnosis so they can have that which is one of the big issues with the men, the, the affirming care, mm -hmm. the, the mental health uh, system as a whole. People go in and you say you got to get a good psychologist or a good psychiatrist. And they're like, oh, no, your grandma just died. You probably are just a little depressed. You don't have depression. Mm -hmm. Well, that person that is unhappy with that diagnosis is going to just go find another one and another one and another one until they get some meds. We, we see it with ADHD. We see it with depression. We see it with anxiety. You know what? Being anxious is an anxiety. Anxiety yeah. is debilitating. So we're, but the way that the system is now, you can doctor shop because they can't check the other doctor's work because of HIPAA laws. So you can, you can go get medicated. And people do that because everybody wants to have that because we celebrate that. All this talk about removing stigma. Well, you, we we had a reverse effect. We celebrated, and a lot less people would do that if it actually affected what you could do on a daily basis. And that's your choice. That's not taking away your freedom. That's your choice. I'm trying to remember who I heard talking about this recently. It wasn't about this issue because it was a little while ago that 
the the absurdity of our victimhood culture that because something happened to you you are now a cause celeb or an expert on this or a you know you've got the, these parkland kids out there screaming about gun control because they happened to be on the campus when some psychopath went around shooting kids okay not because they themselves did anything during the shooting it's just they happened to be there right uh the if it is it is well we we brought up a while ago the uh the thing uh bill maher was making fun of of the um the skyrocketing rates of younger and younger people identifying themselves as some something on in the rainbow mafia mm -hmm. that's not an accident when you start perpetuating things like this, including this victimhood mentality, well, then everyone wants to be a victim. Yeah, well, it's, it's we you, you can even say it in a lighter way. When you make something cool, everybody wants to be cool. Look, why at do TikTok. we have to get rid of everybody Joe doing the same damn thing over and over again to because it's the new trend. The Marlboro Man and Joe Camel, we had to get rid of them because it made smoking look cool, and that's why kids wanted to do it. Yeah, I used to do the candy cigarettes every day, and I have, I've only smoked one day in my entire life, and I hated it, and I still don't smoke. So candy cigarettes didn't do it, I guess. Uh, but they were fun because every adult smoked back then, and as a kid, you wanted to be like, cool so it wasn't marble or the candy or or the the camel it was the fact that you, the adults around you were modeling it but at the same time you can't take the right away, away from the adults uh but one more addition to that and then i'll like let you take us home on this uh say you fall into that category where you actually do have a true mental disorder or problem you're more likely to, again, if we tie these things to everyday things, you're more likely to actually try to fix it versus the mentality these days. Again, I have that. So I'm the victim or I have that. Look, throw your hands up in the air. Just not meant for me. Well, if you have that and you can't drive, but you really want to drive, you're more likely to be compliant with your therapy protocol to help you actually get better. And then guess what can happen? Your site can be like, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, getting for good behavior, right? They're doing everything they need to do. They're no threat to society stamp. Boom. There you go. Check in every so often for a certain amount of time. And then you, you can be on your own if you check out more people would be compliant with the things that actually work instead of just being drugged up and having that. If we connected this thing, this phenomenon that is mental health to everyday things, instead of ignoring it, like it's not a problem until somebody shoots up a school. Well, the, uh, I'll, I'll pivot there to, my thoughts on this because yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this one up too with your thoughts this the problem with that is well while, while i do see that that could be a partial solution or at least something that should be explored so that we can see if we can figure out the details you know as you say the the way to make it l the least gameable as possible the problem is that it's it's a band-aid on a deeper sickness, which is the cultural rot of our moral, ethical, spiritual well-being as a society. And so we're going to go to Sunday school. Uh oh, uh, this is I skipped past where we we had left off the last time we talked about Genesis. Um, 
because this was always a a little vignette that didn't make a lot of sense to me of what is this saying because the surface level is kind of weird the tower of babel of let let me scatter the nations and you know put a language barrier between them that's a, that's a weird thing well because the the key to the tower of babel story is this half of the verse here in chapter 11 verse 4 that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of all the earth what they are saying there is as one of the matthew pool classic commentary is that let us make a name i.e a great name as the phrase is used elsewhere cite some different verses they take no care for God's name and the defense and propagation of the true religion as duty bound them, but merely out of pride and vainglory labor to erect an everlasting monument of their wit and wealth and magnificence to all prosperity. Um, Percy by Shelley, I believe it was, who wrote Ozymandias, and it's a it's a snarky poem about a uh, a broken statue in the desert. And all you can read is just part of the epitaph of the of look upon my works and wonder. Well, there's nothing there but desert and a broken statue. That is the the vain glory of humanity. What this story is saying is that broken apart from God, or as our founding documents say nature and nature's God, the idea that there is natural law, that left to his own devices, man will decide that I am God. I can reach heaven by simply building an impossibly high tower. I don't have to do the difficult things of moral living in order to reach heaven. I can just construct an elevator to the sky. That's the point of this story. And we have been going there faster and faster as a culture. So you see this chart here. This is a uh, uh, Wall Street Journal poll that they did in 1998. 2019 and then again in 2023 and these are the things that americans value and you see the drop 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 in patriotism religion having children community involvement oh but money shot up the one thing that goes up is money This speaks to a corruption of morals that we have decided that I, the individual, am the most important thing in the world. This is where the victimhood mentality comes from. This is where the, it's not enough for you to accept me. You must affirm me. This shooter said, and advocates, people who want us to feel sorry for the perpetrator, have said, well, this is the only way this person could feel seen. The hell does that have to do with anything? Why is that so damned important? Well, that you've just described every school shooter in the last 10 years by saying that. Yeah, that, that in a lot of ways, what happened here was the the newest component of this you know mass psychosis that we've all been slowly tumbling down since columbine the the problem in the uniqueness of this is well it, it's it's unique and not unique in, in a way so remember the orlando gay club shooting that the media was all excited about initially because oh, someone shot up a gay club must be some white Christian. Oh, oops, it was some Muslim guy. Let's ignore it now. 
Well, that person, people like that, and there are a few other instances, it's the same idea is I want to be seen. I want to make a name for myself. I want to make a great name, as, as it says in the Tower of Babel story. And there is a section of the population affirming them, not just accepting, but affirming them is I can go out and uh, commit this mass murder in the name of my God. And these people, this population will celebrate me. And they're telling me that this is what you have to do to be a good fill in the blank. Well, same thing is happening here. This you have to fight this. Words are violence. Uh, the the don't say gay bill is literally going to kill people. The freaking Eternals movie. People are on the red, red carpet saying this movie will literally save lives because of all the representation in it. That is insane, and it is feeding people who are quite literally insane. If you are already warped. And you get fed this affirmation, well, then of course you're going to act on it. Well, and therein lies the problem. It, it, social media. Let, let's let's talk about the elephant in the room. Is is one of the biggest drivers of a lot of this. You look at the money one; it's steadily going up. Well, it also is very very much tied to the fact that we can see a lot of people with a lot more money than us on a daily basis, where in the past, if you were part of your community, which also has been going down, if you were a part of your community, your status in that community was what determined your internal worth. Well, my status in my community is pretty damn good, but I can get on Instagram and see, uh, hit, scroll down the feed and see, you know, 50 or 60 people that are millionaires all in a row, billionaires all in a row, in their yacht, in the Mediterranean, with 30 girls around them and a pina colada in their hand, right? We can see that, and that triggers our mind. So it's going to give us a skewed sense of what it means to be high status when it comes to money. Uh, and the bigger our actual perception of community gets, the less we take part in what is actually our community. Does that make sense? We're, we're participating in it right now because we're making a video for YouTube. We're putting it out in the broad community. When we're sitting inside our house with um, probably someone walking by with a dog I could talk to or, you know, and I still try to make time for that. I'll, I'll go outside and just piddle around just so I can talk to people walking by. If, but if this shooter had been part of her, com com her physical community, you, you can't do this. If you see them as other, you can kill nine-year-old children because they're not real. What's real is this other community I have out in the ether. Now, but this is actually something I had queued up and I didn't really have a segue for it, even though I wanted to kind of bring this home, but let's just talk about it briefly. And let's, let's, uh, call a spade a spade and we need to talk about our politicians too it's not just the media this is hr5 this is the new uh elementary and secondary education act of uh that they passed on march 27th here this is the one where aoc jumped up and gave a long speech of how it's a fascist bill uh and then there was i can't remember who it was but said that they don't want you to teach your children about the Holocaust. We need some sort of accountability system, a legal accountability system for our politicians. More freedoms for citizens. If you're in public service, more accountability if you're in public yeah. service. Because this person stood up there and said they, do, they are trying to prevent you from teaching about the Holocaust. Let's look. Where does Holocaust come up in the bill? Let's read that. It is the sense of con Congress that all public elementary school and secondary school, inclu including public secondary career and technical education school students, should have opportunities to learn the history of the Holocaust and anti-Semitism. It is precisely the opposite of his statement in the bill. 
but he got up there and said it to get his people riled up, to get his people hateful of the people who would support this bill. This should be stopped. Not just people saying it should be stopped. There should be something that prevents a politician from making a statement like that is completely untrue. Speaking of accountability, time to go down the deep, dark hole. Quickly, quickly. We got another subject to get into. I know. It may have to wait until this evening, but because this, this is, I mentioned this before, and I'm going to try and connect the dots here. Kermit Gosnell trial in Philadelphia. This is from the Atlantic, hardly a right-leaning site. The grand jury report in the case of Kermit Gosnell, 72, is among the most horrifying I've read. Quote, this case is about a doctor who killed babies and endangered women. What we mean is that he regularly and illegally delivered live, viable babies in the third trimester of pregnancy and then murdered these newborns by severing their spinal cords with scissors, it states. The medical practice by which he carried out this business with a, was a filthy fraud in which he overdosed his patients and with dangerous drugs, spread venereal disease among them with infected instruments, perforated their wombs and bowels, and on at least two occasions caused their deaths. That, of course, being the women, not the live babies who were born outside of the womb and then stabbed in the back of the neck with a pair of scissors. As the Right, this is this... in the Atlantic. I'm going to assume they blame it on abortion laws. As in, they had to go to this back backwoods doctor. No. Oh, that's usually the angle they, they take. Until Thursday, this was written in 2013. I wasn't aware of this story. It has generated sparse coverage in the national media. And while it's been mentioned in RSS feeds to which I subscribe, I skip past most news items. I still consume a tremendous amount of journalism. Yet had I been asked it at a trivia night about the identity of Kermit Gosnell, I would have been stumped and helplessly guessed a green Muppet. And then I saw Kirsten Powers' USA Today column. She makes a powerful, persuasive case that the Gosnell trial ought to be getting a lot more attention. It is a multifaceted case that any part of which would have caused outrage like the fact that white girls from the suburbs were treated directly by the doctor were taken into an office where they were made comfortable while black and asian women were left in a dingy gross waiting room and drugged up by unqualified admin staff that's just one element that should cause outrage amongst the media as a whole. But you can't do that because then you might start asking uncomfortable questions about the fact that we are a sick nation that has embraced a cult of death. What is the difference between, and in uh, other articles I had found about this, it talked about how these procedures are usually done in utero. What's the damn difference? Whether you stab a pair, a sharp implement into the base of the skull of a 24 plus week old baby while it's in the birth canal or two seconds later when it's outside of the birth canal, it's all euphemistic garbage. Much like the current issue is being wrapped up in euphemistic garbage like gender affirming care you mean cutting the healthy breasts off of girls castrating young boys and then mutilating their bodies that's what you're talking about and that's what bills like the tennessee bill are intended to stop in much the same way that you remember wendy davis you weren't following politics at this point but she became a cause celeb very briefly because she tried to filibuster an abortion bill in the texas legislature that came out after the gosnell trial i've mentioned this before all that bill did was say that abortion facilities have to follow the same 
health guidelines, medical guidelines as any other outpatient facility. And that caused hysteria among the pro-abortion left. Why? Because we can't think too hard about what abortion is. We have to wrap it up in the euphemistic language of, uh, as the good doctor would say, oops, here it is, uh, fetal demise as the, so one of the the witnesses who was charged with illegal late-term abortions as well, Gosnell taught me how to flip the body of the baby over and snip its neck with a pair of scissors to ensure, quote, fetal demise. I never knew it was murder, she said on the stand. Yes, you did. You didn't want to admit that it was murder. We have embraced a cult of death. In pagan rituals, child sacrifice was an integral part to those rituals. Body mutilation was an integral part in a lot of them. We have embraced that. And our values show it. Well, back to the topic on hand, I <clears throat> I didn't go into detail, but you talked about everybody losing their mind on the left if you just brought up a very sensible thing that should be done in this arena. I brought up another restriction to gun ownership. And do you think anybody's going to listen to the words I say other than restriction? No, no. So the, there, therein lies the problem. It has nothing to do with what's sensible. You brought up a, a very, what everybody, even the people at the Atlantic agreed is in a, a very horrid situation. Whereas on the other side, there are things that happen with guns that shouldn't, that, that, that are done by people who should never own one, who should never touch one. And we have to be able to come up with sensible answers. Again, I didn't bring up any details because that's stuff that needs to be hashed out over a long period of time well, with a lot of discussion with a lot of smart people. But the fact well, that we have this issue where there are these people that exist and they shouldn't be able to touch it, including this girl that just did this bad, bad thing, all the 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 the, 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 the I'm not even going to say the extreme right, the the no restriction on gun ownership right all they would hear is a gun law or a gun restriction and then they would flip their shit and they would not listen to a single word coming out of anybody's mouth that that would even try to talk about that situation saying it's exactly the same as the abortion left they flip their shit even if you say well, all they have to do is be clean we're not just uh, saying they uh, can't do it on the other aspect of this particular issue is you're a transphobe. What? No, we just pointed out the fact that someone who is suffering from body dysmorphia is suffering from a mental illness. They are suffering. I am not a phobe. I do not have any rational fear of trans people. I have the deepest sympathy for them because they are going through something very difficult and there are slime balls affirming, pushing them into it rather than trying to help them. In the same way that in the Gosnell case, one of the things I didn't get into, you know, down the article is how long public health officials knew, not necessarily the full extent of what was going on there, but how nasty that place was for years and they did nothing what broke the case actually had nothing to do with all of these murders the fbi raided it because they thought it was a pill mill and then when the agents got there they couldn't help but process the scene and prosecute these crimes because you had literal baby parts in jars 
which gives you an indication of something we've talked about before that the boots on the ground aren't the ones to blame when it comes to the FBI, CIA, and all of that. It 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 was the upper uh, the the upper management that refused to do anything until they thought it was something else. It and to your point about the accountability of public officials, I looked and I looked and there was there was one person who was a co-defendant with Gosnell in his trial. And then there were nine to 12 others who pled out and then testified against Gosnell in that trial. I could not find anything on the laundry list of departments in Philadelphia who knew what was going on and should have shut this place down and did nothing because as people said it's a political football it's a hot button issue we don't want to get into it because it has to do with abortion mm -hmm. well we can't talk about the the deep mental health problems with people in the trans community with people with body dysmorphia because that's a hot button issue because if you say something about it, you are dead naming and you're going to get kicked off of social media or you're going to have some very outspoken mob come after you. And so we ignore it. We don't because there's it. something deeply rotten with us as a society when it comes to our morals because we don't have any, because too many people have bought into the postmodernism wholly subjectivism i don't know i i i think i'm thinking a little better of humanity than you are here because i have a real sneaky suspicion if we changed the the message to where people were actually and i'm not even saying give people a positive message i'm saying if we changed the message to where things were just reported as they are as the facts we know at the time, the people would respond in a positive way. It's the it's it's because they trust somebody, which they trusted the guy at the front of the the Congress that said they're trying to make sure that you ca they cannot teach about the Holocaust in schools when it says exactly the opposite in the bill. They trust that man. They voted for him. They're they're biased to actually trust him after they voted for him because they made a commitment. If we got rid of that ability to lie to your constituents, for example, I guarantee you all of those numbers would change. I guarantee you the animosity between everybody would go down. You get, again, I hate to use just one example, but it's the easiest one. They're trying to take your guns away with every little thing that is discussed about it. Here, here is my smidgen of optimism, you know, with what you said, spinning off of what you said, is that the negativism part is that people are inherently cowardly. Um, we, no, we throw around are inherently the, followers. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. We throw around the hero way to, word way too often, and and there, it, it it means something. There are real heroes, and they're the ones who don't follow who, like the Nashville police, run towards the sign of gunfire, unlike the Valdi cops who physically restrained parents who tried to run to the sound of gunfire to help. That is the point of the algorithm. That is what Elon Musk is exposing and where, where unfortunately, this is the, the downside, the flip side to the uh, uh, outsized influence of twitter is because normal people aren't going to see it because they're going to see facebook they're going to see instagram they're going to see what's on their youtube feed and the the whole point Bring up of that that the, the 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 bar chart again the whole point of the algorithm is to da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, make you feel like you're alone make you feel like you're the oddball that that there aren't very many people who think like I do. No, no, no. There are very few people who are actually in the crazies. You're the majority, but it's going to be hard to stand up and vocalize that in a way that matters when you think you're all alone. So let's look at having children. 
and about message, right? So I brought up politicians, but let's look at cultural messaging. If we allowed the voice, you know, sorry, fourth wave, wave feminists here. If we allowed the voice that to be spread in society as the boss bitch voice is being spread that says having children is cool. Oh, you know what? Here's how to have a child and have a career at the same time or, or things along those lines. If that message was as big as the, you're a boss bitch, you don't need a man. I guarantee you that number changes. So it's, it, it, I, I believe in people a little bit more. Yes, they are followers for the most part. Yes, the hero trope is well, is overdone, but that's where that's where the solution is too. The solution is we need to figure out how to have the right messages put out versus what is put out. The lying is just one of them. Another is this is this is what's this is what we celebrate. We celebrate the the woman that don't need no man versus, you know what? Being a mom's pretty dang cool too. Or we, you know, let's look at men. We celebrate, go to any dad page. And what you have is a bunch of jokes about a simp that's afraid of their wife. And guess what? Women ain't happy. Because we're spreading this message that this is the way you have to be. More on that in part two of today's. But yeah, it's it all starts with the cultural messaging. And there yeah. are pe people on the top that are benefiting from all of those bar charts going down. I've said before that one of the reasons uh, Peterson's book, uh, Antidote to Chaos, uh, was so good is because it wasn't just self-help platitudes yes it sounds silly but he gave you a tangible thing make your bed and it doesn't have to be making your bed but something like that to create a little bit of order and have a routine blah blah blah, blah. well we try and do that as, wherever we can is offer tangible advice to hear something you can do and i guess that would be my closing thought here of of where to turn this ugliness into something productive is if you're going to follow and the odds are you're going to because that's just how most people are and the, that's that's not a shameful thing it just is what it is so if you're going to follow make sure you're following something true and good well and create a system some sort of system that allows you to check yourself as you go along that path. We've talked about this with fitness. You can't know everything about everything, but you can de develop a network of trusted sources that you've already vetted. You know, you've checked them enough times that, okay, you know what? When it comes to baseball injuries in the shoulder, Eric Cressy has yet to, to let me down. So you know what? Maybe I won't check his work as much so I can just read his damn article. Mm -hmm. You know, Brett Contreras, man, he knows a whole lot about training the glutes. And every time, everything I've checked, uh, other sources on his topics has checked out. Guess what? If he talks about glutes, I might just sit and listen. Mm -hmm. So you develop a network of that. You can do it with any subject. You know what? This politician lies less than the other ones. Maybe I'll take him at face value when he's arguing with this other one, but you've already checked their work. And when it comes to the things we talked about today, we have the ability to check their work. May, they make statement about bill. You can go read the damn bill. They're all public. Sometimes it's annoying to find, but yeah, you can yeah. find the actual yeah. text it's, to it's, look at your actual self. It's hard to find unless you know the actual name yes. of the bill. This one took me a while to to find because I couldn't remember what they called it. I knew, I knew there was and a it, five in it. And if you just go by what people are calling it, well, then you're going to get all these news stories like I was pulling up when I was trying to find the text of the Tennessee bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes you can get the the actual number of the bill in the news story, mm -hmm. which is where how I found the Tennessee bill. I went down the news story till it actually said 
uh, SB, whatever, da, 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 da. And I just, I just. So what I love is when they give you the actual technical name of the bill and then they there's it's a hyperlink, except it's not a link to the text of the bill. It's a link to another article about the bill. Yeah, that's always the worst. But yeah, you can check people's work. You don't you don't even have to have a college degree or any of that stupid stuff to do it. You just have to be able to read. Mm -hmm. And if you can't read, you just have to have somebody you trust read it to you. You can we can always find the answer if we look. And then, I mean, unfortunately, most people don't have a lot of time uh, or, but you have to, if you're going to make an informed decision, you have to at least take a little time. And with the, we, we're in a glorious age with the internet, we get a lot of bad information, but we all, we also have access to everything we need to know to find out what's bad information. No, that's like the well, actual bill. Well, hopefully we've offered something uh, new as well as useful to the discussion and and that's all i've got for part one do you have any other closing thoughts uh sorry we were trying to make shorter videos <laughs> by doing this but at least uh you won't have a three hour video you might have a two hour in a 45 minute video yeah well part of that was because we we came at it and and this is the two dudes talking aspect of what we try and do here is we came at it from very different approaches. Well, and, and we talk about uniqueness and maybe I'll open with this in the, in the next one. So somebody, if they listen to both or if they only listen to one, they'll get the front front, get it on the front side. But we rarely talk in detail about the things we're going to talk about ahead of time. We, we say, Hey, I want to talk about this, put, put together some thoughts on it. And every once in a while, if it's something that could go in a lot of directions, we'll say, I want to go in this direction. Hmm. All right. Well, we will see y'all in part two. All right. Later.